the meeting to order. Welcome everyone. It's May 4th, 2021, and it's our special joint meeting between the council and the library board. Meet call the meeting to order. If we could do a roll call. Thank you and good evening. Council member Doherty. I'm um, excuse me, Commissioner Doherty. Here. Commissioner Buxton. Here. Commissioner Capatosto. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Junawala. Here. Commissioner Neumer. Here. And Commissioner, I'm not sure how you say Marie Marie's last name, but I don't see her in attendance yet. Council member uh, Risto. Here. Council member Hudis. Here. Council member Badami. Here. Vice Mayor Rennie. Here. Mayor and Chair Sayak. Here. And so we do have quorum, and so we call the meeting to order at 548. And before we get into tonight's business, I will open to our public for those that may want to speak to us on an item that's on the agenda during verbal communication. So I see no hands raised. And so I'll close verbal communication. And tonight um, we have the benefit and the honor of speaking with our library board today. As um, we have done with our other commissions, we wanna make sure that we have an opportunity via Zoom, uh, it's as close as we could get to saying thank you in person for your service and the work that you've done on behalf of the town of Los Gatos. I know personally the work that uh, the library has done last year during COVID has been remarkable in the, uh, how quick Quickly and nimbly, uh, all of you have pivoted and provided services to our residents, and I think those are the those are the little personal touches that um, make our community so special. I think we all recognize that our library is our one of our shining stars, and so we just really wanted to make sure that we hear the work that you're doing. Um, see how we can work together on some of your upcoming priorities, and then possibly answer any questions that you have that are not only in our staff report, but just that may be happening organically from our conversation. And so again, we just want to welcome you. Um, before I get into the heart of the discussion, Director Baker, I want to turn to you um, to see if there are any items that you'd like to share as a staff report, and then ultimately if you have an opportunity to introduce all of the board members to us. Sure, I'll go ahead and just uh, give an introduction to our library board here. And um, I, I will start off by saying that it has been a very unusual year um, for us, uh, and particularly for the work at the library board. The library board, um, uh, quite often helps us in terms of our policies and the direction we're going for, um, for our normal operations. And, uh, and, and this, uh, this, this past year has been anything but normal. And, uh, and as a result, uh, sort of the, the normal flow and work plan uh, of the board was quite disrupted, um, but it's been a fantastic group to work with. I really appreciate uh, everybody's, uh, everybody's input to move forward. Um, I'll uh, just go through the, uh, uh, the different uh, commissioners here, and um, and then I'll turn it over uh, to uh, to our vice chair. So our our chair uh, Trish Goldfarb is uh, will not be in it was not able to attend uh, t today. Um, uh, our vice chair uh, Sibia Chunawal is here, and um, and our, our commissioners Susan Buxton, Richard Capitosto, uh, Lynn Ordi, um, uh, Marie Ange Tagne, and our youth commissioner uh, Jack Neumer are are all. Uh, been fantastic to work with and uh, greatly appreciate everything they, they, they do. Um, I believe uh, Sibia has, um, will give a kind of an overview of, of some of the work plan going forward. And then um, all, all of the, the, the commissioners in, in attendance uh, may have some comments that they'd like to add in terms of uh, directions for going forward. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, so um, obviously despite COVID we had some Pretty significant accomplishments, nonetheless. Um, not just pivoting to uh, the new normal of reduced hours, and but still somehow getting books in people's hands and doing really creative things in terms of curating um, surprise book bags. And um, I've really enjoyed the library of things. You know, being able to check out puzzles and robot kits and craft kits. And so I think that you know there was a lot of great pivoting 
And we also expanded the collection in terms of other languages beyond English. So um, that's just a couple of highlights I wanted to share from our accomplishments. Um, but now moving to goals and work plan. Um, first and foremost, we've been completing a five-year strategic plan for the library, which will replace the last plan um, that covered 2015 to 2020. Um, looking at what additional library service needs as more housing units are added. And as we can see, the houses being built uh, very quickly here, we sort of need to think about what that means for the library in terms of services and needs. Um, we also want to assign a liaison from the board to attend the meetings for the friends of the library um, to facilitate better communication between the two organizations. Um, continuing expansion of the library of things um, in terms of non-traditional materials for circulation, because we've seen that that's been really popular. Um, one of the things we had wanted to start before COVID, but we'll hopefully get to uh, expand, is the creating a seed library consisting of plant and flower seeds that the public can utilize for gardening. Um, we want to also support the librarians that are currently in charge of the historical archives that are in process of seeking and cataloging historical materials and interviewing people of color that have historically um, or present, uh, presently reside in Los Gatos. And that project has you know, obviously already started and more than a dozen uh, interviews have been done of uh, former and current residents of Los Gatos. Uh, we'd like to update or create the working policies and procedural documents. You know, Ryan alluded to that being sort of the normal course of the work we do, which uh, was a little bit on hold due to COVID, um, but we've listed some of the policies here that we would like to update. And I will pause there a moment to uh, let you ask any questions and for others to add anything to the work plan or goals that they'd like to highlight. Thank you. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll first look to your colleagues to see if there's anyone that would like to add to what the vice chair has said. Huh? Okay. Um, and then council members, any questions um, or comments based on not only what we heard, but also what was in the staff report? Huh? Yes, council member Badami. Um, that seed library is a very interesting concept. So if you could elaborate on that, I'm used to going to a library and checking out books. So do you check out seeds? Do you bring some seeds back and replenish? Can you just kind of elaborate on how that's going to work? Yeah, I think the idea was almost like one of those um, old style library catalogs with the little drawers, right? And um, having the seeds in there. And yeah, people would come and, you know, donate their own seeds as well. Um, so it's kind of like a seed exchange, yeah, if you will, yeah. yeah Trisha's, done, Trisha's done a really good job getting that started. Yeah. And I went with her to the Santa Clara Library. They have a very successful seed exchange. And you take seeds and plant the flowers or the vegetables or whatever, and then the seeds from what you have planted, you return. I mean, when they produce seeds, then you return <laughs> Well, I think I think it's an interesting and great idea. I mean, at one of our last council hearings, we had uh, someone floating the idea of a community garden. So there, there's a lot of interest in this area. So thank you for doing that. Sure, it's a great idea. Council Member Hudis. Uh, thank you. And I just have to say, I, uh, I love the library. I uh, have enjoyed it since I rolled into town 34 years ago and uh, have have used in a lot of different ways over the years. And it's interesting to hear about the different directions that the library is providing service to the town. So I, first, I just want to say thank you for, uh, for guiding the library because it's a, it is a fantastic resource. Um, I was interested in the oral histories uh, project and uh, making that part of uh, the, the rich resources that we have about the history of the town. I was curious, how will the public um, be able to access that? Is it transcripts? Is it um, MP3s? How, how, will, how will that be organized and how can it be accessed in the future? Uh, I, I can just get the logistical piece of that there. Um, the ones that we have completed already are on, on, uh, hosted on a YouTube uh, channel that is under the, the library's name. Um, and we can give the link to that. Um, as, and then it is also hosted on our history 
History Los Gatos website, which is a the website that we run that has all historical documents and photos. So that, that's where they live after they're um, they've been produced. Great, thank you. I, I had another question, if I may. Of course. Um, so, you know, some of the library resources uh, really have to be experienced in person, or you know, the richness of them. So, I was really interested, and I've accessed the historical uh, resources that we have. Uh, you know, many of which are various forms of paper that go back a long time. And sometimes they're necessary when people are doing research, if they have a structure that might be considered historic. How, how is that accessed now? And do we anticipate any changes to that uh, when things become fully open? And I just, again, want to put a plug into the terrific uh, historic resource that we have in the library. Um, Lynn, would you, do you want to well, give, I, give some of your fantastic knowledge there? <laughs> I volunteered for the, at the history room, uh, the history group we call ourselves, for the last 15 years. I haven't been back there for 15 months, but um, I'm hoping, and that's really, uh, Ryan, or, uh, not, not your job, but when we can fully reopen, the history room will still be alive, won't it? And all of our uh, written uh, resources and files are still there. And Matthew's right, you, that you really need to see them in person uh, in some cases. And all the obituaries are, well, that, they're online now too, but there's a lot of stuff that's not online and it still is in the history room. And you need somebody there. We hope that volunteers can still go back um, because we sort of know where everything is. Yes. Uh, and we do have quite a bit that is digitized on our History of Los Gatos website, um, but it, it is only a, Lynn, I don't know you can, what, what fraction it would be uh, in terms of um, uh, how long it's going to take us to get well, everything up there. We also have ephemera, you know, that you just have to look at to see. Um, American Legion caps, I mean, I'm just coming up with it. I can't think what it is. But we have a lot of ephemera that is, that is historically interesting for someone who's looking for that kind of thing. So I just, what I'm saying is I hope we keep the history room. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so too, thank you. On, on that note, I'd like to know, are there programs, things that you've done differently during the pandemic that you would like to keep once we go back to what we consider normal operations? It's an interesting question. Like I wonder, Ryan, like with some of the story times, like having some of those Virtual. I mean, obviously, it's great to have the kids come in and, and do it live, but but the attendance at the online ones has been pretty good in terms of for children's story time um, and those types of things. And and certainly, I could see like some of the other events, like um, you know, some of the arts and crafts type events, where like yeah, it might not be easy for someone to necessarily get to the library at the time. And so, I could definitely see hybrids of some of these things. I know about others. Like a simulcast. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, oh. Commissioner. <laughs> no, I was thinking just just simulcast it so you can have people who can't attend yeah. still participate. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Council Member Ristel. Thank you. Um, yeah, I also love 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 the library. I you know when I moved here in '87, I discovered it and. You know, even though it was tiny and damp and, you know, underground, it had this kind of homey feel to it. And I used to take my kids there. But, you know, in the new location, it's become really a community gathering place. You know, the students, you know, once it opens, I'm sure the high school students will be back there again. And all the programming has just been remarkable. One of the questions I have is, you know, based on kind of a more cognizance of what full history means and with the library's good work of taking stories of people that haven't traditionally been heard are there um are there um plans to enhance the history room to expand what we consider the history of los gatos um i, I could speak to that a, a little bit so um much of what we have is what people uh, what people give to us, and so that, that that's always been uh, a struggle point is is trying to um, 
uh, trying to actually collect things um, that we can put in. Um, and so we continue to do that. And we're continuing to try to, to uh, on, a, on a normal basis, just as part of our work, uh, try to reach out and, and uh, make connections in order to bring more materials in. Um, so for example, uh, just within this last week or so, we have been in talks with, um, uh, with uh, the organization that, that took over the Ming Kuang um, uh, um, organization um, uh, regarding the, the archival uh, photographs and documents that they have related to, to uh, when Ming Kuang was in operation. Um, and they're looking for a home to house those particular documents. And so we've been in, in just in some talks with them about that. And so we are looking at, at, at all points in order to bring more stuff into our, into our historical collection. Uh, but we are very much dependent on, uh, on word of mouth and, and, and people searching their, their, their attics and their basements and uh, finding things that they, they think will be of value in, in order to, um, to, to help us uh, fill out the collection. So we don't, we, truly don't know what exists. And Lynn, um, Lynn probably has uh, much, much more experience in, in doing all the, uh, the searching out of materials than, than I do. Well, I was, I was just gonna mention that uh, we also have uh, a large file. One of the most frequent questions we get is, tell me about my house. What's the history of my house? And so we have accumulated quite a history of, of some of the older houses in town. But I was also, I was also gonna say, um, we need more space, and I don't know if you guys can do anything about it, but the history room is small, and also for the library of things as we expand, it would be wonderful if you guys could just figure out how to give us more space. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. I had some other questions, but maybe I'll, it looks like, um, uh, ready? So Manager Provetti. Thank you, and I want to also express my appreciation to the library board for your excellent work. I was just thinking as we're talking about history, if Director Baker could just update the council and the board on our collaboration with Moonyu. Um, thank you. Oh, uh, yes, I'm sorry. this is very recent and it happened very, very quickly, but uh, we, we've, uh, we're applying jointly uh, for a grant. Um, that will, if successful, um, it, it will uh, give us more uh, resource means for digitization. Um, and then uh, Numu's collection will be, uh, will be hosted on the History of Los Gatos uh, website, which is run by the library. Uh, somebody from the public uh, searching for any information on something within the uh, Los Gatos history uh, would just come really to one portal. And then through that one portal, they'll find things in our collection as well as the things in Numu's collection uh, coming up with the same searches. So, um, uh, so that's a, a, a nice collaboration and it's uh, the first steps in, an, in a new project. And uh, we just, just finished that grant Friday. So <laughs> it happened very, very quickly. So um, I believe my board members here, I, I, this is the first time they're hearing of it also because it, it happened kind of like lightning. Um, uh, but we're, we're uh, very excited about the possibilities uh, coming forward to, to uh, do collaborative work with them in order to expand uh, our digital presence for our, our historical archives. That's wonderful news and good luck. Oh. Council member Badami. A quick question for Ryan, how much is the grant? Um, uh, let's see, it's multiple parts and I would, um, uh, it's over like a three year cycle and I believe it's like, uh, 85,000, but it's, it's broken up into different chunks. And then part of it goes for, um, uh, sort of the, the majority of it goes, uh, for the vast collection that Numu has not been able to digitize. And then, um, and then other portions cover uh, our, uh, our our operating side in terms of uh, digitization. So I can give you uh, more breakout of numbers if you're if you're interested. Um, but it's a little hard to answer in terms of uh, saying of parsing it out between the two organizations. That's good enough. I just wanted a general idea. So thank you, Mr. Baker. Oh sure. Councilmember Risto. Thank you. Um, so going to the policies that you wanted to update, I mean, first of all, I wanted to thank the library. You're the first commission that kind of, when looking at the application process for a commission board or committee, pointed out um, the way we have a, sec a couple sections asking about past experience and how that could 
I don't know if it necessarily is a barrier, but it could be viewed by an applicant as a barrier toward um, being able to apply to a commission. It might look really daunting when we have a whole section on elected positions, another section on boards and committees. So that really struck me. And I thought, you know, we still might want to know, but maybe all those things should be clumped together to one question. You know, what's all your background? What have you sat on? So I thought that was really useful. Uh, the questions I have are you listed some policies that you thought needed updating. And I was just curious what precipitated that. I mean, I was really pleased. I've read articles in the past about how library fines actually don't pay for themselves and they drive people away and they cause people who don't return books never to come back to the library. So I was so happy when those were abolished. Um, but in terms of the other policies that you've got in terms of minors, in terms of behavior, could you, does anyone want to sort of talk about like what the issues are and what you think needs changing? Um, I, I have a rotating cycle. <laughs> That's yeah, there are existing <laughs> policies that we just like, you know, relook at, um, you know, yearly, I think, is that right? I think we look at them annually. What's well, about every, every, uh, every four or five years. They, they yeah. Okay. Maybe we more than annual. Yeah. And just see like, okay, have circumstances changed um, in terms of how things are operating, how people are interacting, um, any issues we're encountering and that kind of feeds into them the update. I know pre-pandemic, there were some issues with um, how full we were, especially in the teen center upstairs. And I'm curious, was that alleviated? It's alleviated now with the pandemic, but before we shut down, did things improve or were we able to space so that everyone who wanted access to the library had access? Um, I can speak to that. I think we're, we're always uh, during the after school hours under normal operations impacted by the by the crowds that we have. Um, so I, I think that's just a, or uh, something that we have to take as uh, as a normal point of operation. That it will oftentimes be standing room only or floor seating. So. Which I suppose is a good thing because it's being used. Yeah, I certainly feel better with my kids going there after school than other places. <laughs> so it's a nice place for them to hang out before sports start. Um, and the door there helps keep the noise levels at a, you know, manageable level as well. I'm curious, Jack, as the youth commissioner on here, uh, do you feel that the, is there any other policies or um, services that we could provide to, to meet the teens needs other than more space? Well, to be honest, I think that's about it. Uh, I mean, there's just so much that the library does for the youth community that it's just like, it's overwhelming in like the support that it gives to kids. Cause I know the library is just such an important, like, you know, part of the youth um, just experience in Los Gatos, just for all sorts of kids from high schoolers in the teen lounge to younger kids in story time. So, yeah. Thank you. Council members, any other questions or comments? And so commissioners, I wanted to see, um, give everyone an opportunity. Are there other thoughts that you'd like to share with us? Um, uh, your staff report is very concise. Um, and uh, But if there's anything that you specifically wanna highlight that you'd like more discussion on from any of us, please, please let us know. Okay, I see none. Okay, well, it's a beautiful day. And so probably you probably are all anxious to get out before the sun sets. But again, we just wanted to share our appreciation. You've heard almost all of us say how much we love the library just as much as you do, I suppose. Good job this last year. We appreciate it, Ryan. Uh, so I'll, I'll pass that down to, to the staff um, because I just, I just uh, give them some resources, but they, they make everything happen. Uh, so there you go. Well, kudos, because that's also a sign of a great director that always appreciates their staff. So thank you, Director Baker. Okay, well, thank you all. And um, council members, I'll see you in a couple minutes, but um, to all of our commissioners, thank you for joining us today. And um, we look forward to seeing what else is uh, planned at the library in the upcoming future. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.